Yes. Well, I want to welcome everyone here to the listening room as we continue this series, One Another. And if this is your first time here at Bridges Nashville, oh, we do service kind of family style. And so we've got the kids in with us. And if you have little ones, we do have kids activity packs uh, out in the lobby. And they're going to have some resources in there, some coloring pages. I kind of want to swipe one of those after service. I like to color myself. Uh, but they're going to have some messages on there that are going to go with the message so that you can continue the conversation after service with your kids if you have them. And I want to also let you know that after service, we like to hang out. And so we've got some ice cream sandwiches. We're going to throw down summer style. We hope that you guys would uh, spend just a few moments with us after service. It is great to have you here today. If you have a Bible, uh, you can go ahead and turn to Galatians chapter 6, or you can swipe on your smartphones. And if you don't have the Bible app or your Bible, we're going to have the scripture on the screen. And we're going to get there in just a, a moment. And uh, if you're online, you can also join us on those scriptures, and we're going to have the slides up there for you. Uh, did you know you cannot go to church? You can't go to church. Why? Well, because you are the church. We are are the church. Church is not a building. It's not a time slot on a Sunday morning. It is the gathered people of God. In fact, in Greek, it's this word ekklesia, and it means the one that God has gathered to himself. And so let me just tell you a little bit of our heartbeat here at Bridges Nashville. We are a house church movement, which means we meet in homes uh, all throughout the month, starting Sunday evening to Thursday evening. We have an online Sunday service every single week. And then, of course, on our first Sunday gathering, which is the first Sunday of the month, we meet right here at the Listening Room Cafe. So we do things a little bit differently here at Bridges, but we like to think that we kind of come out of the book of Acts, chapter 2. It says that the early church, the first church, they met in homes, breaking bread with one another, studying the scriptures, praying, and dedicated to fellowship and communion. So they met in homes and they met in the temple. Now, I know this isn't exactly the temple. This is the listening room cafe. Uh, but I believe that gospel community can change our world. And I think house church is one of the easiest ways to step into gospel community. It's how we live out this one another lifestyle. It's how the early New Testament church lived. And I'm so inspired every week as I hear stories of life change and growth and discipleship taking place in our house churches. Listen, our family moved back to Nashville from Washington, D.C. in 2017. And we had about 15 months of a pre-launch season before we launched Bridges in September of 2018. And during that time, I had hundreds of uh, coffees, lunches, and dinners. It's amazing I can stand before you today because I had so much barbecue. Um, but coffees, lunches, and dinners, and I just wanted to meet everybody I could. I also drove for Lyft, and I met a lot of people that would hop in the car, and I'd always ask this conversation. I'd listen to their stories, and I'd say, what's the one thing in your life that you're missing? The resounding answer, community. The resounding answer was community. And I would say that in 2021, the statistics are a little bit more magnified, aren't they? Isolation and depression are at their highest rates recorded according to research. We need each other. But can I tell you something about this word community? In our Christian context, as we follow after Jesus, this is important. Jesus didn't say go out and find community. He didn't say go out and, and make friends. He said go out and make disciples. Matthew 28, it's the Great Commission. So I think if community is our number one goal, Discipleship may or may not happen, but I promise you this, when discipleship is your goal, community is always a byproduct of that. And so as discipleship takes place, relationships are forged. So if you're new at Bridges, where's Pastor David? Pastor David, I want you to talk to Pastor David right after service. He oversees our house churches. Love to get you plugged in with more information about that. Well, last month, uh, my family and I had the opportunity to take a little bit of a sabbatical, and that's just an extended period of, of rest. And so we had a month in July where we just did some travel. We went up to the Ark Encounter in Kentucky, and it is awesome. Uh, we went over to Gatlinburg and did some indoor water park fun. And we spent a lot of time playing, but we also spent a lot of time praying and reading and getting into some podcasts that would challenge our spirits and our hearts, and God did some amazing things. And I want to share, is it all right, can I share my favorite moment from sabbatical with you guys today? 
I think we got a video. This was my favorite moment. It took place at our sister church down in South Franklin, uh, Graceland Church. My daughter, Nora, went to a youth camp with some of their youth. We're good friends with Pastor Nathan. That looks amazing, buddy. Moses is on the word search right now. Uh, he's having fun. Uh, let me share a moment. So Nora came back from youth camp and uh, decided she wanted to give her life to Jesus. So let me share this moment with you guys today. Probably my favorite moment in my life. Got to baptize my daughter and uh, that was a really special moment. So excited. Right there, that was the cake. That was the icing on the cake and everything in between. So we're so grateful for some of our kingdom partners like Graceland that have an incredible uh, youth ministry and glad that Nora got to go along with them. And I want to just say a quick thank you to our staff and to our house church leaders for carrying the torch uh, while I was gone. You guys know in Ephesians 4 it says that 100% of ministry falls to the lead pastor, right? No! That is not what Ephesians 4 says. It says that pastors and teachers exist to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And I'm encouraged to see that that is exactly what is happening. So let me give you a little bit of a runway over the next month. Today and next week, we're going to wrap up this One Another series. It has been, well, as the kids say, it slaps, okay? The, these next couple weeks, we're going to wrap up this series one another. Next week is going to be an online and house church week where we're going to dive in to pray for one another. Today, we're talking about bear one another's burdens. I hope you've enjoyed some of the fresh voices that have spoken over this sabbatical. If you missed any part, you can catch up on our YouTube and our podcast. And so next week, we're going to wrap up the series with pray for one another. Then August 15th, we are launching a three-part series called The Presence of God. It's going to be an online series. We're going to dive into it in our house churches, the presence of God. And we're talking about the most important thing in our lives. Most important thing in our lives. The world doesn't need another service. The world doesn't need another church, another preacher, another great band. The world needs more of God's presence. And that's what this series is all about. We're going to cap off that series on August 29th with a night of worship right here at the Listening Room Cafe. And we're going to throw down some serious praise. It is going to be awesome. Students are going to be back. We've got some families moving back into the area. I believe that is going to be a praise and worship throwdown. So mark your calendars, August 29th, right here at the Listening Room Cafe. And it falls on our fifth Sunday Sabbath. And what better way? to spend Sabbath resting in his presence than to worship with the community of faith. Amen? Amen? Let me just say this as well. We do have a parents' room in, in case you know you just need a little bit of a break. It's right out in the lobby. We've got our live stream feeding in there. And so if you need to grab a cup of coffee and just take a break, feel free to do that. I meant to say that at the top. Also in August, we are going to be bringing back our morning devotionals. And so you can follow along with that. This is a 60-second shot of faith in your arm to get you started off on the right foot. And can I ask us something as a, as a church? Can we be intentional over the next month in our prayer life? Can you make, not fine, can you make 10, 15 minutes every morning to spend in the presence of God just praying? Praying for our city, praying for our nation, praying for our church praying for whatever it is that God wants to do. I believe that revival is on the heart of God. Pray every day, and those devotionals will be an added inspiration to get into your prayer life. It's all about the presence of God. That's the heart of Bridges, to be a place where his presence and his people connect. Okay, wow, I feel like a news bulletin with all of those things. I just, a month-long sabbatical, you knew it was coming, okay? So are you still in Galatians chapter 1? All right, here we go. Galatians uh, chapter 6, sorry, chapter 6, verse 1. Here's what it says. Dear brothers and sisters, if an, another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person get back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens, and in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think 
You are too important to help someone. You're only fooling yourself. You are not that important. I like how blunt Paul can be. Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. Share one another's burdens. Carry one another's burdens. Bear one another's burdens. Now, there's a lot to unpack in these five verses. Paul who is the prime church planter in the New Testament. You know his story. He was a church persecutor and then turned into a church planter because of Jesus getting a hold of him on the road to Damascus. So Paul, as he's visiting these churches, he writes them letters when he can't be there in person. And he's addressing things in his letter that are pretty important. They're so important that they've lasted for 2,000 years. And Paul, in this passage in Galatians, is addressing this issue when someone is caught in sin or overcome by sin. And the place that my head immediately goes to, if you remember this, in John chapter 8, is when uh, the woman is caught in the act of adultery. Do you remember this? In the Gospel of John, uh, there is a story of a woman being dragged into the center of the streets by the religious leaders as she was caught in the act of adultery. Now, side note for the record, where's the man? Where, where's the guy here? Things that make you go, hmm. But in that culture, they decided to kind of put her on trial, and they really wanted to trap Jesus. They brought her in front of Jesus. See, the law demanded that she be stoned to death. Oh, but Jesus, yeah, he bends down, and he begins to write in the sand. And we don't know what he wrote in the sand. When I'm face-to-face -face with Jesus, I think that might be one of my top five questions. What did you write in the sandbox that day? But Jesus stands up and he delivers this one-liner. He says, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. Hashtag mic drop, right? He delivers this line and one by one, starting with the elders, that was huge in their culture, they left because they knew that no one was without sin. Now listen, Jesus knew that adultery was wrong. In fact, he said in Matthew chapter 5 that even if you look with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. So Jesus is not accepting adultery here. He's not approving of that sin. What he's doing is he's gently restoring the woman. See the difference. He's carrying her burden. He saves her life, then he gives her life. Why? What does he say to her? He says, go and sin no more. Leave your life of sin. I want you to know, it's not our job, if you're taking notes, you can write this down, it's not our job to throw stones. It's our job to offer grace and restore the way Jesus did. A Dietrich Bonhoeffer's book, Life Together, phrases this, not just as bearing one another's burdens, but as bearing one another, forgiving one another, showing mercy and grace, overlooking offense. And you can do that when you have relationship. Listen to me. You can't restore someone without relationship. You can't rebuke somebody and it make a difference without relationship. The tough conversations that I have to have every now and then as a pastor always go smoother when the other person knows just how much I care about them. You can't restore without relationships. So that is the primary way that Paul is talking about bearing one another's burdens. And I want to share, spend the rest of our time talking about something that might be a little bit more every day for us. It might be a little bit more practical. Let's look at this one more time. Uh, Galatians 6 verse 2, it says this carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? Well, Jesus gave us in the great commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so to fulfill that law of Christ, you got to carry one another's burdens. Now, the Greek word here for burden is bare, B-A-R-E, and it actually means a heavy load. A heavy load. And this could be something that just weighs you down. It could be emotional, financial, physical, relational. And I want to make it personal this morning. You see, I'm a pretty upbeat guy. I'm not just the glass is half full. I'm glass is all the way full kind of guy. And it's really hard to get me discouraged. I like to think I have that encouragement gift that Pastor David preached about online last week. But something hit me late last year. If I can just let you into the window of my life. Something hit me late 
last year. We were about six months into the pandemic. And for the first time in my life, I just couldn't see my way forward. I couldn't see ahead. And it was a scary place to be. I was praying in the mornings. There was no secret sin in my life. I just, I was down. I couldn't see ahead. We had been in lockdown. I hadn't seen many people. And out of the blue, David and Michelle gave me a phone call. They just said, hey, we just want to check in, see how you're doing. We just want to see if you're doing okay. It was a simple phone call. But it led to a dinner where we shared testimony. We shared story. We shared tears. We prayed together. We shared some amazing burgers. And he'll tell you how amazing his burgers are. <laughs> And God did something in that evening over that dinner table that led to Pastor David stepping into the role that he is in now as our staff pastor. He's got nearly 20 years of experience as a lead pastor. And, and I just think back to that phone call. I think back to that simple, how you doing? See, I can say that about so many people in this room that have given a text or a phone call or seen me in a coffee shop. Hey, how you been? Not surface level, but how are you really doing? And I wonder, is there somebody in your life today, this week, that you can just not text them, but call them? Hey, you've been on my mind. How you doing? Did you know loneliness is actually at an epidemic level? In fact, in 2018, the prime minister of England named a, pri uh, named a they appointed a minister of loneliness to address this isolation problem. And that was pre-COVID. That's how serious loneliness and isolation have become in this day and age. And I would ask you, who can you minister to this week? Who can you say, hey, I'm in your corner. How are you doing? In their book, Everyday Church, uh, Tim Chester and Steve Timms write, the great swathes of America will not be reached through Sunday morning services. We need to shift our focus from putting on attractional events to becoming attractional communities. Can I say that again? We need to shift our focus from putting on attractional events to becoming attractional communities. And I would add to that, what can be more attractional than a community of faith living out a one another lifestyle? Bearing one another's burdens is not the way of the world. It's the way of the kingdom. It's the way of Jesus. And so as we look in Scripture, we see people all throughout the Bible who are carrying burdens. And there's usually one or two people that step into this story and help carry the load for them. For David, it was Jonathan. For Naomi, it was Ruth. For Esther, it was Mordecai. And for this guy, Moses, in Exodus, we're going to check out a couple key points. And if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. We've got it on the screen today. Two points I want to take from Moses' life. Number one, you don't have to fight every battle alone. And number two, you don't have to solve every issue alone. Let me give us some context. Uh, God calls Moses, you know the burning bush story, he calls Moses to rescue his people Israel out of the hands of Egypt and Pharaoh. Uh, ten plagues later in an epic showdown at the Red Sea, the Israelites embark on this journey to the promised land. Oh, but the struggle is real. They encounter nations and armies and battles that they have to fight. And that leads us to Exodus chapter 17 when they're waging war against the Amalekites. Check out what goes down. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady, until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. I want to do something fun this morning. Can I bring up Jake and Christian? And I just kind of, this, this is my Aaron and my her today. Yeah, y'all can give them a hand. We're family, so we can do this kind of thing. But I'm going to pretend like I have just a burden on me, okay? And we're going to try to walk from this side right to the piano. So Christian, why don't you come up on my right side? And we're just going to do... So if I've got an errand, how easy is it to carry me here? Not, not too easy. If I've got an errand in my life, it, he can hold me up, but barely, okay? Now, Jake, why don't you come over here, man? See, if you've got two people in your life, here we go. 
We can get to that piano. No problem, right? Awesome. I'm glad you guys ate your Wheaties this morning. Y'all give him a hand. Y'all give him a hand. But it is so important to have an Aaron and a her in your life to hold you up when you've gone weary. Everyone needs people to lift them up when they're tired. And everyone needs a Joshua to fight their battles with. I was recently listening to a podcast with Pastor Chris Hodges. He pastors a church of the Highlands down in Birmingham, Alabama. And he just got really vulnerable on this podcast and shared how last year he went through a deep depression. His leadership was under attack. Uh, people and opinions were flying at him, and he didn't know what to do. He said a depression was kind of like a dark cave. It's disorienting. You don't know how to get out. Small things like bats are magnified and can really scare you. And that's when one of his pastor friends flew to meet him and just said, I just needed to get into the same room with you. I just needed to see you face to face and ask how you were doing. And Pastor Chris said that that was the turning point in his journey. When he began to get out of the cave, he just came out with a book called Out of the Cave. Highly recommend it. And I would ask you this morning, who do you have in your corner? Who is going to bat for you? Who is an Aaron and a Her in your life? Who is bearing your burdens? If you don't have somebody like that, I would say that is the reason the church exists. That is why we're called the body of Christ. Because when one part hurts, the others feel it. We are better together. See, the reason that house church is such a conviction for us here at Bridges is because family happens in the home. Family happens in the home. Relationships happen across the table. See, in house church, we share a meal together. We share our stories. We share testimony. We share our lives. We bear one another's burdens. I think you can find an Aaron or a her in that type of environment. And then on the flip side, whose burdens can you help carry from Galatians chapter 6? This week, I promise, you will find an opportunity to hold somebody's arms up. Call somebody, let them know that you're with them, that you're for them, and that you're praying for them. I think sometimes we flippantly throw that out, I'll be praying for you, and then we forget it. What if you did it right then and there, and you just prayed for them? I have to, because I'll literally forget. But pray for one another is how we're going to close this thing out next week. It's a huge way to bear one another's burdens. So number one, you don't have to fight your battles alone. The second circumstance that we take from Moses happens in the very next chapter, chapter 18. You don't have to solve every issue alone. See, at this point, Moses is leading the entire nation of Israel. And this is over a million people. He's fielding all the complaints. He is their complaint department. He, he's doing all of the decision making. He is carrying everything on his own. And then his father-in-law, Jethro, I love that name. Jethro comes along and visits his son-in-law. He gives them a God idea, not just a good idea. Check out what it says in verse 17. Moses' father-in-law replied, what you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me, and I will give you some advice, and may God be with you. You must be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes to him. Teach them his decrees and instructions and show them the way they are to live and how they are to behave. But select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times. But have them bring every difficult case to you. The simple cases, they can decide themselves. Listen to this. That will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. See, we all need godly people in our lives helping us with decisions and giving wise counsel. In fact, Proverbs says that wisdom is found in the counsel of many advisors. Decision fatigue is a real thing. Is it just me or does it feel like these days we have to make hundreds of decisions all the time and it never lets up? And it's good to know you don't have to solve every issue alone. Bearing one another's burdens was the New Testament operating system. If someone was injured, took them a meal. 
someone was lonely, you gave them a visit. If someone was fighting a battle, you'd lend your sword. If someone was depressed with the weight of life, you became a helping hand and a listening ear. I think when we begin to look with the eyes of the Spirit, we can see the burdens that we could carry. Now, let me close with some really good news. We have a God who loves us so much. He loves us so much that he decided to solve the burden crisis. First on 5-7, it says, cast all your cares and your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I would submit to you today that some of us may be carrying burdens that aren't ours to carry. Jesus paid for it already. There is a freedom and forgiveness that comes through the cross of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21, this is the gospel in a nutshell, and it says this, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Come on, that is good news today. Amen? God saw our sin problem. He saw our struggle, and he made a way out. He said, give me all your weight, your sin, your past, your regrets, and your mistakes. Give it all to me, and I'll give you my righteousness my hope, my joy, my life to the full, according to John 10.10. It's a pretty good deal. And here's what makes it the good news, the gospel, that it's free and it's true. We can't carry the burden of sin and separation. Christ took that on the cross and paid for it. So my last point is a question. Are you tired today? Are you exhausted? Are you weary Matthew 11, 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will, you will, you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus was talking about this wooden farming tool called a yoke. And it's literally this thing that looks kind of like this with two indentations where two oxen would get under it and pull a heavy load. They would pull a burden. And Jesus says, why don't you come into my yoke? I can do the heavy lifting and we'll do this life together. So this morning, whether you're joining us online or you're here in person, I want you to know that your life can change in Christ. The world offers all of these suggestions and tips, but only Jesus offers to get into your yoke with you and to carry the heavy load. Romans 10.9 says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and was raised from the dead, then you will be saved. Let Jesus bear the weight of your sin. And as the family of God, let's bear one another's burdens in love. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your son. We thank you that we can have life and have it to the full. We thank you that we have forgiveness and we have freedom in Jesus today. Hey, right now, if there's anybody in this room that wants to cross that line of faith, that wants to say, look, I'm tired of carrying my burdens alone. I want to get in that yoke with Jesus. I don't care if you're old, young, black, white. The cross is the leveling field. Jesus died for every single one of us. And his life is for you today. You can just lift your hand wherever you are. And I just want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. If you're online, please send us a message. We'll reach out to you right after service. Best decision you'll ever make. He loves you so much. He sent his son and made him who had no sin become sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. Lord, we love you. We bless you. We honor you today. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing a song. And this is a song that's an invitation. It's, it's come to the altar. And I love the line here that says, the Father's arms are open wide. See, the gospel is both inclusive and exclusive. It's inclusive in that it's open to every single person who would come to the foot of the cross. 
but it's exclusive because Jesus is the way. He's the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way but Jesus. I've tried other ways. doesn't work. There's stories of those in this room who have tried other ways. just doesn't add up. The gospel has no holes in it. Pastor David and I will be over here for prayer. Team is going to lead us in a song, and then we're going to go into a moment we call Selah. And that's just a word from the Psalms that means rest and reflect. So you're going to see scriptures on the screen. We're going to be over here for prayer. If there's anything that you need prayer for today, whether it's physical healing, whether it's a burden that you're tired of carrying alone, uh, Pastor David and myself will be over here. I think Michelle is going to also be with us on the prayer team. We just want to lift your arms. We want to be that Aaron and her for you today. So would you guys lead us in worship?
that we always do here at Bridges is we share communion together and the elements are back there on the bar top if you haven't gotten them go ahead and get them but you know that Jesus when he instituted communion he said do this in remembrance of me we fast forward to Pastor Curtis sermon today and Paul says to you and I to bear one another's burdens or carry one another's burdens. And therefore, we fulfill the law of Christ. And, of course, you went through that. And so today, as we take communion, I want you to focus on, you know, we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, but love one another. Like, love one another as you love yourself. And so as we take communion today, just kind of focus on that aspect of, fulfilling the law of Christ. And I want to love my brother, my sister. I want to carry that burden. And you know, as you uh, spend this time with, with Christ here in the next few minutes, and you can ask him very easily, Lord, how do you want me to do this? Lord, who do you want me to become a burden bearer for? And he will answer. He was going to give you someone. He's going to show them to you. He's going to drop a name into your heart. I believe so much tonight. Hallelujah. So, Father, as we take communion today, Lord, speak to our hearts. Speak into our spirits, Lord. And let, let, let us be the church that carries one another's burdens, that loves one another as we love ourselves. Lord, let us fulfill that law that you gave us. In Jesus' name, amen.
are so grateful for your presence this morning. I thank you that we can see communities around us and just see a better representation of the kingdom of God. We are so thankful that you want to spend time in relationship with each one of us. And we are so grateful we get to observe that here in any space. Like Curtis said, it's not going to the church, but it's being the church. So I pray that as we go through this week and through every step, that we can just focus more on the greater kingdom and not just ourselves, not just us, but getting to see your hand in other people's lives as well as our own. So thank you. We love you. Amen. Don't you love the presence of God? It's the best thing in our lives. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. Man, he's here in this place. If you wanted to come up for prayer and you just weren't comfortable in this setting, I'm going to be hanging out afterwards. You know, we've got ice cream sandwiches going on in the lobby. And so we just want to foster that spirit of community. And, man, this is a new season. It's a new day. We believe that the darkness and the, the weight of this last year is shedding. And we're just stepping into a new thing that God is doing. And so we just invite you into that. And we want to do it with some ice cream sandwiches, okay? So we'd love for you to hang out. I've got just a few announcements. If you can grab your seats for 60 seconds, uh, we are just about wrapping up our time here. First announcement is this. If this is your first time here at Bridges Nashville, we want to say welcome. If you're online joining us, welcome. We would love to say hello and give you a free gift today. So you can stop by our connection table. It's out in the lobby. We've got a couple gift options for you. You could get a really nice T-shirt. Or you could get one of our coffee mugs. Both are a great addition to whatever it is that you've got going on. And so make sure you stop off at the connection table on your way out. We do have connect cards at the tables in front of you. If you're online, you can go to bridgesnashville.com slash connect to do that today. And the second announcement is all about giving. Now listen, if this is your first time, there is no obligation to give. We're just so glad that you are with us. But if you call Bridges Nashville home and you want to worship the Lord in your giving, we read in Luke that Jesus says it's better to give than to receive. We look in Malachi where it talks about that this is the only thing that God says, test me in this and let me show myself faithful to you. It's in our giving. And so I want to encourage you, you can give today. Four easy ways to do that, bridgesnashville.com slash give. We have a giving banner back here if you want to do that in person. You can also text that number to give or go through our Tithely app. And I want to let you know that your giving it goes towards furthering the gospel here in Nashville and abroad. It also goes to helping us live out our call to be a church that blesses our city. And that's my last announcement. We have our annual backpack block party that is coming up this Friday. And your giving has helped us purchase 500 backpacks for school kids in need right here in our city. And we partner with United for Hope. We partner uh, with a school that is in our Haywood community. And so we're excited to be able to bless them with school supplies and backpacks. And so we thank you for your giving that has enabled us to do that. And if you want to come and be a part of that, we need some volunteers. We're looking for about 10 volunteers. We're going to join with our friends at Haywood Elementary. And uh, we're looking to have some more volunteers. So if you want to come out and do some community service, but more than that, if you want to come out and be the hands and feet of Jesus, easy way to do that this Friday. You can email Sarah at bridgesnashville.com. Sarah is our hospitality lead, and she just went out into the lobby. And so you can talk to her about what this looks like. We need some people to help us run some bounce houses. I'm going to be grilling some hot dogs. We're going to have some crafts and arts and stuff for the kids, people to hand out backpacks. You will never find more joy than giving a kid a backpack a few days before their school year starts when they didn't think they were going to have a backpack. So if you want to come out and join us and be in the hands and feet of Jesus, it's this Friday. Talk to Sarah about that. Listen, we end every service with a simple phrase. When you leave this place, you don't leave his presence. He goes with you. He is for you. God bless you guys. Let's hang out and have some ice cream. <laughs> awesome. Love you guys.